So welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much for your, for your attention. We're going to move into the second panel session, which is about accessing resources for digital transformation in urban and rural areas. Uh, this one is going to be moderated by our dear friend Usman Bamba, um, who is um, our lead in Mali for PATEF. And um, we also have with us Dr. Issa Boro. And we have with us also Yazi Adamu here. So in terms of the people who are here, let me just provide you with a brief introduction. Uh, Yazi Adamu um, is from Patef and Niger. After completing his engineering degree in topography from Ecole Nationale Ingenieur in Bamako, uh, Yazi Adamu served as director and host for US based nonprofit organizations for more than 25 years, covering the Sahel and, Sah and Sahara area. His field of expertise includes, it, but is not limited to, personal development, entrepreneurship, and business development. Yazi is Niger Acting National Managing Director for Global Entrepreneurship Network, GEN, PATF Country Representative. WBAF Senator and Niger Business Angels Network President. Now, uh, also in our panel is we have Dr. Issa Boro. And uh, Dr. Issa is one of the pioneers of multimedia in Burkina Faso. Um, he led the first training on multimedia communication in Burkina and contributed to increase the use of ICT through training and organized organizing events. He headed the representation of AUF in Burkina Faso and the Department of Continuing Education and Professional Integration at the University Joseph Kizero. He is Deputy Director of the Institute of Distance Education in the University. And our lead on this um, is, uh, of course, Usman Bamba, now, Usman is the uh, Chief of Staff of the Ministry of Communication, Mali, in, in 2018. Mr. Pamba was also Chief of Staff of the Ministry of Culture in 2000, as well as the Chairman of the Malian National Organizing Committee of the Bamako 2000 International Conference and ICT. In 2002, Mr. Bamba chaired the African Regional Preparatory Conference of the World Summit on Information Society. He is Mali's first cyber jurist, a writer, and academic, and former national coordinator of UNESCO CMC Project for Mali, and head of communication at Banwakul UN Women. Mr. Obamba is the holder of a multidisciplinary DEA in law, uh, cybercrime, and ICT security from the University of Lausanne in Geneva. He is also the founder and moderator of Kene Dogu Forum. I hope I pronounced that. Okay. Usman, um, over to you. Um, you are going to be leading on the discussion on this. You are welcome. Okay. Let's, let, let, let's kick this off. Um, I'm going to be moderating the session. Unfortunately, our time constraints are really quite tight. So my first question is, in your opinion, what could be the role of technology in the fight against corruption? to ensure better transparency in the management of public funds in Africa? This is a question about uh, the role of tech in fighting corruption to ensure public transparency in the management of public funds in Africa. My first question, I'm going to put that to you, Osman. Uh, thank you so much, uh... I think that we have, uh, we are uh, from Tunisia countries, we face a problem of language issues. So we apologize ourselves for, for, uh, for any convergence. So I, I think that uh, as we learned uh, this morning uh, about uh, blockchain, I think that uh, in the coming years, blockchain is coming to, to change uh, our, uh, our uh, manner to do election in Africa. I think that uh, for, uh, for secure transparency, in uh, acceptable uh, elections in Africa, we have to try the, the, the blockchain technology to, to share the result of election. 
Uh, this is what uh, I think. Excuse me for, for my English. Not at all. I, I wish more English-speaking Africans spoke French. So you've done very well to be coming across in the languages that we speak. Um, Dr. Isaboro, I'm going to put the same question to you. And if you could kindly unmute yourself, please, and show us show us your microphone and show us your camera. Wonderful. You're here. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. I so the use of public right. tech in in um, better management of public funds in Africa. Okay. I think that uh, technology can bring much, very much uh, improvement in the fight against corruption in the management of public funds in Africa. Because but technology will help us take take away many opportunities to for the workers to intervene in the process in the legal rule because corruption may uh, usually depend on workers who come come in through the process to try to to to, to modify the, the process and help someone get some undue advantages. But with the use of technology, this may not be possible. It reduces possibilities for them to come across the process. So, so that's why you will see in many countries in Africa, workers, public workers in financial or fiscal uh, areas, they don't want the process to, 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 to be shaped in a, in, with computer using to to get it auto automatized, so they are aware that if technology come into the process, it will reduce it will reduce their possibilities. So I'm um, correct, sister. Yes, yeah. I think technology have to give us a lot in the fight against corruption. Correct. Okay. Can I can I ask the same question to Yazi uh, Adamo, please? Yazi, well, how do you think um, tech can help fight corruption in Africa, in public life in Africa? If you could show us your 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 camera and unmute yourself, please. I'm Yazi from Niger. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. I think this is a good question. I mm -hmm. think uh, early this morning we talked about uh, blockchain cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. I think technology can help uh, combat corruption in our countries because when you go cashless, everyone may know where and uh, how the, the revenue is generated or the income or the money or the amount, where it comes from. And we may know the destination if uh, uh, there's uh, uh, this blockchain uh, is applied in our countries. And obviously, we can combat uh, fraudulent uh, taxpayers mm -hmm. because we may know who earn what from what this is earned. Mm -hmm. And uh, by so doing, I think most of financial corruption may go away. <laughs> and this is on the financial side. But if we, we, we go through the other financial corruption, like in education, someone took an exam, or deal to even the exam and he yes. passed. Yes. If there's a really good technology where we can track really who really applied, who didn't apply, and who finally got the marks and who mm -hmm. can pass the test, mm -hmm. I think this is uh, this will be really far. For most of our countries, um, many countries do not trust our education system. You have to take a secondary exam or test mm -hmm. to go to uh, foreign universities. 
Mm -hmm. Even if someone is born in Ghana or Nigeria, if he has to go to maybe U.S., mm -hmm. they will ask the TOEFL exam. Mm -hmm. Or even the other countries, uh, just growing countries like in Asia, they have their own test. They can call it yours in Turkey because mm -hmm. they don't trust our system. So they bring right. their own questionnaires and their own exams. So I think if we decide those things, I think we will be better off. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move rapidly on to the second question. What plans can the public or private sector put in place to ensure that people who live in rural areas have access to technology? We can't expect them all to move into the cities. Um, we'll go with that uh, to Osman. Osman, what's your view? How do we give access to tech uh, for people in the rural areas? Because they have to stay there. I think that uh, as a former coordinator of the CMC project for UNESCO, I think that in rural area, the first problem we face is the problem of electricity, the problem for energy. So yeah. we have to imagine uh, an alternative uh, way to, to give electricity to rural area to enable them to access uh, to technologies because it's not uh, easy for uh, an area where we have no 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 uh, energy to, to access to internet. Okay. Uh, the second uh, the second uh, thing is uh, uh, about uh, uh, the the lack uh, sometimes of in internet connectivity in rural area in Africa. If you take uh, my country like Mali, we have a lot of uh, rural area who have not uh, uh, mobile phone or. Uh, uh, connectivity and uh, and internet. In this case, uh, how to enable them to access to to information? Uh, I think that in UNESCO we 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 try a, a project what we call Wikipedia offline. It was a kind of uh, of a CD we we put on on it uh, Wikipedia to to give and to share. Uh, in the rural area to, to enable them to access some time on uh, information. We have also the experience of uh, uh, the software of Enrich. Enrich was uh, in India, uh, in India technology proposed uh, for uh, rural uh, area access uh, to information. So I think that to summarize my idea, we have to, uh, we have to resolve first of all the, the question of uh, of energy and uh, and now the question also to to oblige. I don't know if you have in the other countries uh, what we call uh, the universal access fund. We have in Mali a fund uh, which is set up by the, the different telecom operator. This fund uh, is used sometimes by the government to oblige uh, operator to go through the country and to to bring uh, connectivity to rural area. If this okay. phone is well uh, used, we can uh, resolve the problem. Okay. Yes, yes, Ramon. Thank you. I think, uh, yes, I buy in what uh, uh, Dr. Osman already said. So, Niger, we have 83.3% uh, of people living in the rural areas. And actually, less than 25% 20, of electricity coverage. And the internet uh, penetration is uh, less than 71.7%. Mm -hmm. So I think that the challenge is how we can work on those. I, 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 I was asked to help uh, women in the rural areas to adapt uh, financial inclusion. And those ladies were illiterate. Mm -hmm. The rate of uh, literacy in Niger is uh, 30 30%. 30 only three in ten people can read and write. Hmm. So I think the best way to do this is first go to education so people may know how reading and writing and have electricity. What I figured out when I went to my village is border Nigeria, seven kilometers from Kelly. Hmm. So people pay equivalent of 10% of their living expense per day. If you mm -hmm. deliver ten dollars, they have twenty cents to put to charge their cell phones mm -hmm. because there's no power. Right. So I think education, power, and increased uh, internet connectivity is uh, really high. Otherwise, 
those uh, 83 percent from the rural areas now is end of harvest time they will come to the to the to the cities and uh, this is the, the source of uh, insecurity and many problems so if right. they help improve their conditions where they are i think uh, i don't I want to say we are better off will we all be better off in the rural and uh, in the urban areas okay dr borrow um, any insights into how to expand um, the use of tech into rural areas? Yes, I agree with Usman and Yazi that in rural areas, there is a serious problem of energy. Sure. If you, uh, you don't get energy to use your mobile phone or your, uh, your laptop, you you have a serious problem. Mm. But so public authorities have to 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 to, to solve this problem. Mm. But some people try to to develop their own solution with a solar system. And it seems to work, but I'm not sure it will, it, I'm not sure it lasts because the, the technology, the solar technology is not well, well catches, uh, catches in our countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't agree with, uh, Yazi. Mm -hmm. that uh, literacy is a problem because we notice that in many parts in many rural parts people with no literacy find solution to accommodate mm -hmm. their use of technology because they need the technology they want it so they find solution to use it even they are not uh, literate. So okay. I think the main problem may be on materials, on equipment. Yes. 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 The, the, the public authorities have to help rural area to better access to equipment okay because equipment and tech and, and connectivity yes it usually it, it's cheaper in a urban area than in rural areas got it got it no okay. bad yeah. okay the um the, the if i may go now to almost the last question Taking Kenya as an example, mobile banking has forever changed the local economy in Africa. Do you think that the new digital currencies, cryptocurrencies, will have the same future on the continent? Do you think crypto can change the face of Africa the way Momo has? Has changed the, the, the I think that the bank. Okay. I think that uh, cryptocurrencies is a good solution for international transaction. So I think that African people will get in to solve the problem of transferring funds from a country to another. Mm -hmm. But you can you can take the bank card as example. Mm -hmm. You will notice that we have bank cards in Africa, but mm -hmm. people use it mm -hmm. to, to for payment online or for other thing. But in the day to day, in their day to day, right? In the, oh, sorry. <laughs> in their daily expenses, we don't use bank card and that will be the same the same fit for 
uh, cryptocurrency. They will use it for international transaction. Right. But locally, I don't think we'll, they Adoption will have to take rather longer yeah. to to no. uh, to be taken on. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have um, I have another question here. Mm. Uh, when it comes to the application of uh, of tech, there are so many times that I try and set up interviews in Africa, and as a journalist, for example, and I want to interview people, I want to talk to people, I want to talk to real people with real stories, and two two problems arise. One, the cost of internet connectivity is so outrageous that even if you send a big file or a video to somebody, you've got to think about what it's going to cost them to download it. Secondly, when at high bandwidth areas, most of the, you know, journalist interviews, a lot of them are done in the evening when everybody else is on the internet. Um, the traffic is heavy. So what are we going to do about the availability of, of bandwidth and tech that we can afford? Usman. What are we going to do about it? What's the solution from any any of the three of you? This is the last question. What are we going to do about the cost of connectivity, the cost of data, and so on? I mean, it is actually a tax on the development of Africa. Anybody? Yeah, I, I will jump in that. Go, go ahead, yes. <laughs> so I think it's good that, sorry, can I go for that? Yes. Yeah. So I think we have to develop uh, good partnerships. Uh, what we, in my country, we have a few uh, telephone companies, uh, the Niger, the, the Niger oh, telephone no. companies. There are only 9, 9% of the market, mm -hmm. meaning that all that we are putting, like I'm talking to you, is via Airtel. Mm -hmm. The national companies are not really effective or efficient because our women are not putting money into them. So this is this is I think this is uh, one of the issues. So it's not the issue of uh, uh, of the, the, the foreign coming in our countries. So is uh, we need government, our national government, to put money in telecommunication. Instead of giving licenses to other people to come, they are oh, making yes. money, but they are not uh, improving the bond speech. So I think this is the, the first one. The second one is we need to develop partnership. We have many satellites. I don't know how many, seven, ten satellites over my head. Mm -hmm. And those satellites are not working. We use cables, we use, uh, they think it's faster, but it's not, we, we are not get, gaining anything from it. So I think the best thing to do from, from my side is investment, developing a partnership that can help us to grow. Because someone in, in Germany or Europe with 50 euros, he has internet for a month, he can call for a month. And today I charge six dollars to be on this to, to on this call, not to miss uh, anything. So if you have to do it like every day, every day, every day, so you make the Absolutely. calculation, so yeah. you be someone food for one year in the areas. So I think this is the point for me, investment yeah. and develop partnership for the good of the people. Okay. Um, Dr. Dr. Boru, Isa, can you, uh, can you share your insight into this? The cost of connectivity. The, it, for me, it's a tax on Africa. What do you think? Yes, I think it's a real problem. Because you see, many people are using a low connectivity because it's cheaper. Yeah. But the challenge, the real challenge, is to gather people, to gather initiative together, to get much money to access to a larger bandwidth and share it in the use. But people don't think so. Everybody wants his own bandwidth. And everyone don't have enough money to access to a larger bandwidth. Okay. okay. So I think this is a real problem. Okay. Hmm. 
So, well, look, thank you very much, um, um, everyone. Um, thanks for this uh, discussion about how to uh, bring tech alive, um, resources for digital transformation in urban and rural areas. This is something, this conversation isn't going to go away. And the, it is likely that you are the champions. You are likely going to be the champions of this enterprise so i wish you every every good fortune can i ask the audience to give thanks. a big a vote of thanks to can i say something uh, before Nabu? can i say something before this will be the very uh, last i just this want to the very last thing okay mm -hmm. Afi, you got one minute i just want to i just want i just want to borrow on the team uh, one minute to leave no rural behind leave no rural behind thank you that's a really great idea Sorry, gentlemen, we have to go now. If we can show our vote of thanks by, by clapping no. for our, our panelists. Can I have one, uh, one minute? I'm sorry, we're closed. Um, oh, Ted, Usman, I'm Ted, really sorry. Ted, please have Usman give one, one second. Let's okay, all right. All right. No, I say that uh, uh, to, to resolve the problem of uh, broadband uh, connectivity in Africa, we have to develop a national exchange point in each country. If we have uh, in each country a national exchange point of internet, we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, I don't know if you understand, national exchange point for each country to resolve the problem of uh, bandwidth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that idea. We'll float it around the community, I'm quite sure. And it's Again, let me say a very big thank you to uh, Yazi Adamu, Dr. Isaboro, and um, our own Usman Bamba. Thank you very much indeed. And now I'm going to ask Elaine to say well. a few words. I'm um, going to ask Elaine. Yes, we need to bring on um, Agula. Is she here? He is here. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Isman. My. Oh, okay. Just uh, I would like only to add. Uh, uh, in in our country, we have to have an exchange point. I don't know if for. Uh, uh, mean by the exchange point, for example, if I would like to have an exchange, uh, an internet exchange with a uh, national Malian. I use the international broadband to, yes. to, to be in touch with him. If you have right. a national exchange point in each right. our country. Okay, sorry, Usman. So what you're saying is that that's more or less like a national intranet, is it? Usman? It's like a national intranet, correct? Okay, thank you very much. I say right. it's, uh, like, no, it's like uh, internet, but his real name is uh, ex Internet National exchange. exchange Point. Got it. Yes, Got it. for each country. Okay. To have uh, a you. national backbone to share our information inside. Okay, that's here. Thank you so much. And, and for the final, final session, I am going to invite... Um, uh, Agbola Ogun um to talk about Agile, a framework for digital transformation. Uh, yeah. Agbola, if you could go right ahead. We got thank, a few Thank minutes. you very much, Tete. Um, yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Good to see you again. Um, good to have you I again. am just going to share my screen real quick. Yeah. Apologies to everybody who was waiting for me to show up. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen at all, and if you can't, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna put it on share. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, you're you're good to go. All right. Thank you very much. Um, it's unfortunate that I'm the last guy, so it's a little bit more pressure on me. I have to distill what everybody has said today. So Agile is framework for digital transformation. Right. We've had some great um, 
conversations today about blockchain, about transformation. Um, a lot of different technologies have been spoken about. I am going to just skip through who I am. Um, who I am here just gives me the opportunity to have these conversations. I'll flash that for a minute. Now, um, just quickly. So what we're going to be addressing real quick in the next 15 minutes, and I, and I say that very likely, hopefully we can wrap it up, um, by or before then, um, is what is digital transformation? Now, um, we can look from so many different thoughts or different schools, um, what, what it means. But in the African sense, before I move on, let me just um, finish the agenda. Um, how do we transform digitally uh, the framework, agile, the manifesto, the principles, and hopefully we have questions at the end. So what is digital transformation? I'm just going to drive straight into um, a quick, um, maybe definitely digital transformation is the process of using digital technologies to create or modify um, the current culture and give more or less customer experience. So I'll just paraphrase that. So just taking a look at that, um, that, um, definition. It's to create or modify. Now, moving on real quickly, I'm just going to say, how do we transform digitally in the African continent? There's, there's a big conversation about this lack of electricity, infrastructure. There's so many different, um, opportunities we have that we can fill in the gap that us being here today, we have to go away and think. Now, for us to, to transform digitally, we definitely need people. Now, which is right about now in Nigeria, I'm not sure um, in Ghana how, how you guys are doing or in Gambia or Togo. Uh, we, we seem to have a, a brain drain right about now in Nigeria. Everybody is running for the border. Now, again, for us to have the kind of people who can help us transform, we need excited people. We need happy people. We need people who want to challenge the status quo. We need people, you know, who are, um, in the words of, of, um, of Eric, Eric said, uh, we need people who create and who want to collaborate. So Eric Annan, who was with us this morning, said that. So we need all these kind of individuals. But if we're having a brain drain, that's one of the opportunities we have to and feel. But again, it's very, very important that we surround ourselves with excited people, all these kind of individuals. Now, the next thing is we need processes. Now, again, this is very, very pivotal to um, the success of the African continent. We need, you know, for us, we need processes again, just alluding to what uh, the Lakpa Sanusi said earlier on, that we need standard operating procedures. You know, these have to evolve. We need, to, we need to be able to document what we're doing so that when these people do run for the border, again, we have these processes already documented and everybody within this disruptive arena can actually jump in and roll up their sleeve. Um, and last but not the least, we need technology. Um, you know, technology is also very, very pivotal to creating those opportunities. Also, it helps, you know, foster um, a lasting sense of belonging. You know, if we don't have the right technology, how are we going to build foundations? How are we going to transform? And if you remember what I said earlier on, you know, what is transformation? You know, it's, it's all about creating new or modifying existing. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing I would, um, go for is for all of these three. Hopefully we don't look like this. Um, but in the African continent, we, we look like we're evolving, which we are. So people, processes and technology is definitely 70 years. So I have to give that brief introduction for me to dive straight mm -hmm. into the topic today. What is Agile? Which brings me to today's topic. Now, Agile is, it's, it's a simple way of doing things. And I use this word simple, but behind it, you can make it as complex as you want, or you can make it as simple as it could be. Now, Agile exists with certain key things. One, it's a mindset. Extremely important that we capture that and we understand that and we embrace that. Agile does not necessarily happen in the air. It happens in your mind. First of all, your mind has to change the way you're doing things or the way you perceive things to be done. And there has to be a shift in your mindset. And if that exists, then you're halfway or almost there. I think agile is most probably, sorry, um, the mindset is most probably the foundation to building agility. Now, the first thing is, the next thing is the values. You definitely have key values, which we're going to see. I might not be able to touch on everything, but we have 
the values. Very, very true. Then again, we have the principles. It's almost like um, earlier on today, I heard um, Joba talk about, he's a Christian. And in, in Christianity, we have um, the 12 commandments. So again, within Agile, not to relate it to religion, um, it's there are 12 principles behind it. And these 12 principles that they have heard to, it makes it a lot simpler, a lot easier. And the last but not the least is uh, the manifesto. Now, the manifesto obviously gives you an opportunity at different practices. And these practices, again, I'll try to touch on one or two of them um, before I close today. Now, let's talk about the manifesto real quick. Now, um, within the manifesto, there's the grayed out version and there's the, the dark version. I'm, I'm going to refer to the left and to the right. So I'm just going to go through one or two of them, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So again, in the African continent, we know that there's, you know, there's a gap. So with these excited people, these people who want to come to work, these people who want to, you know, change the state of school, these people who want to collaborate, these people are excited. You know, we want to be able to get to a point where we can take everything that, that is being discussed and that becomes an opportunity. It becomes an application. It becomes something that you can give to a customer. It becomes something that you can roll out in a rural area. It becomes, I mean, I've listened to a lot of the speakers talk today and they've made some great suggestions. These suggestions in turn are potentially, um, these are processes that we can adopt. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Again, in about, you know, in about six months, you want to go through your analysis, your development, uh, sorry, your analysis and sign it off after six months. That's not done in Agile. Agile helps you identify things early, identify your requirements early and deliver almost immediately within obviously a, a, a time, a time frame. Not as if what is on the left is not important, but also what is on the right is equally important. But with agile or being more agile, it helps you get to that end point a little bit quicker. Now, this is where I'm going to spend a little bit of my time. The Agile Framework. So this is really what it's all about. This is, you know, like we, we've talked about, we talked about legal. I, I heard us praising um, Joba, uh, Ulua Joba, for being one of the good legal or good lawyers. So again, one of the key things that happen, happen in Agile is you need some sort of team alliance. You need an agreement. Whatever these agreements are is particular to your own organization. It could be legal. It could be a verbal one, but if the verbal, it has to be documented and it has to be agreed to at some point in time. Now, we also have something called um, a, a backlog. Now, these backlog, what happens there is people collaborate. When I talked earlier on about the manifesto, um, those excited people, those customers, customer is always at the center. We take those customers thinking. So everything that's happening in the rural areas, those are our customers, those are our clients. Those are the people we want to serve. They are at the center of whatever it is we want to deliver. So we create a backlog. We create some sort of backlog of everything that we want to do for them, do with them. Now, the next thing is we put that into some sort of priorities that what do we want to do today? When do we want to deliver? How do we want to deliver? Who's going to be involved? But at the same time, we need to think about our political, our economic, um, economic, our social, technology, legal, all of these environments exist within Africa. We have to study those. Um, for example, once upon a time in Nigeria, you want to set up a company, it could take you up to six months. But right about now, you can sit in front of your computer and you can do it over a couple of hours and you've got your city. Now, how did this happen? This didn't happen overnight, but this happened over agile thinking. Yep. So another thing the Lapa did allude to, and I'm going to call these two names because I spent a lot of time, you know, rejiggering these, these, these my slides was, um, you should, well, you should do things quickly and have structure, as I mentioned, SOPs. You know, you should have that. Then in Agile again, one thing that it does for us is it helps us think about the team. So who do we want to bring on board? Do we want to, these excited people, are they short, medium or long term? If they leave, do we have all that documentation? Is that documentation, is it transferable? Is it up to date? You know, then you have daily meetings. You have, you know, opportunities to be able to have discussions about what you're doing. You know, how far you're doing, all the, all the different issues you might have within the organization. And again, one of the great things about Agile, it gives you speed to market. Yeah. The speed to market. So from 
you having um, a collaboration with your customers and clients all the way to you going to market. It can take you a two-week period, depending on what your agreement is at the beginning. And at the same time, you can have a feedback loop so that everybody knows that we can do this incrementally. We can do this agile thing a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. And that's the cyclic motion that happens in agile. Now, another thing I, I just wanted to say, some of the key areas that we need to concentrate when we're doing agile is we need to time box things. We need to all put ourselves within a, I can do this and I am committing to this and you will deliver this. So there's no such thing as I want you to build that. It's this. Now, what is this is a different question. You have the individuals who help you disseminate this version or this thing called this. It's a requirement. It's a high level requirement, a low level requirement, some infrastructure, it's all of this. And it's iterative in nature. And also you create something called charts where you can see, are you achieving your version of this? Whatever this, are you setting those goals? Are those goals realistic? Can you visualize those goals? Can you see that working software? Can you see that working process? Can you see that working product? All of these are very, very pivotal to the development of agile. Now, not to go any further, I know we don't have a lot of time, but amongst everything else, one thing that is key with the agile development is you have to build a team where freedom reigns. You have to liberate your people. Your people cannot be unhappy people. They have to be people you almost trust to the nth degree. You must be ready to take that leap of faith and I use that word very, very carefully, that leap of faith. Again, at the very beginning of my conversation, I said motivated people, happy people. People are not scared to, ch to change the status quo. People are not scared to take a leap of faith. So I would leave you with that to think about just for a second and questions. Teteki, how am I doing for time? Hi, Alf. That was great. Um, yes, there's no way we're going to talk about Agile in, in, in 15 minutes. So I, I think I, I must have skipped through these slides. Yeah, but, but uh, that, was a, that was a very interesting conversation. <laughs> I mean, I like what he said about you have to have people who are passionate enough and people who are dedicated as well to the process. And yeah. I love that because I think that to really succeed in doing anything in Africa, the passion has to be there and the dedication has to be there. I mean, irrespective of what roadblock, roadblocks or challenges are thrown in your way, yeah. you need to have that resilience and tenacity to move forward. So I like the fact that the whole process of Agile kind of fits into my psyche. Yeah. So um, if you're looking for various proponents for Agile, I think you can just, you know, drop me a note and I'll be there. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. Can, can I can I also suggest, um, uh, Abola? Yes, sir. that that you throw out a line where people can connect with you on Agile because this isn't something you. This is a one day workshop. Yes, that's right. Um, especially when you mention the flipping of mindsets at the beginning it takes time for people to get themselves in the right headspace okay, for this. Um, it, it reminds me of what we do at work, actually. Um, and in fact, I'm skipping uh, a strategic planning day uh, at my own agency uh, so that I can be here. So, so I mean, I wish I could just take your slides and carry them off with me. And carry I'm, them happy, off I'm happy to give it to you. Teddy. And, and <laughs> present them to my team. But yeah. look, um, at this stage, I'm afraid we've come to the end of the day, literally. If you could please put your contact details for anybody who needs to get in touch with Agbola or yeah. Gundein, that would be wonderful. Thank and you. now what I'm going to do, Agbola, is I'm going to ask you, chaps, just to show your appreciation with a show of, of emojis to thank uh, Agbola for his time on this. Um, claps, hearts. Thank and you. And I'll you stop sharing day. your screen. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I, 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 well, uh, look, thank you. Thank you very much. You must come again on our next boot camp. We'll put you in the first half of the program and give you some space. <laughs> yes, and a little bit more time. Absolutely. It is what it is.
So right now, I'm going to ask Elaine just to round things off. I know that the clock is ticking for everybody here. We know the cost of bandwidth and, and data in Africa. So I'd just like to um, ask Elaine to give us um, a quick roundup of the day and to thank Dr. Isaboro, uh, Agbola Gondei, Yazia Damu, and all our other, Osman and all our other friends. Elaine, over to you. Well, it's that time again. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know what to say, but the West Africa uh, boot camp is the very last boot camp in a series of boot camps. And those who have been with us right from the start, I can see Kevin Lewis in the in in in, in the in the audience. Kevin was with us right from when we had the very first boot camp, which was the South Southern Africa boot camp. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have been with us for that long. And um, thank you so much for those who have joined us as we've gone along. We started with Southern Africa, then we went to North Africa, which was a brilliant event. And today I was quite um, pleased to hear Alexandro start to uh, speak French because when we had the event in North Africa, we had actually planned that because there are quite a number of French speakers in North Africa, if a speaker spoke French, then he could just go ahead and present in French. And it was quite an interesting event. So thanks, Alexandra, for reminding us that uh, there are many, many French speakers in Africa. Actually, I believe there are more French speakers in Africa than there are English speakers. Um, so thanks for that. So after the North Africa Boot Camp, we had the East Africa Boot Camp, which was also interesting. The focus of the East Africa Boot Camp was women and women empowerment. So that one was great too. We then went on to have the Central Africa Bootcamp, which also had a slightly different spin to it because it was not an English speaking bootcamp. It was purely Francophone. So if you are an English speaker in that bootcamp, you would have felt a bit lost and perhaps needed an interpreter. But just to show you that when we say we're not leaving any African behind, we mean it. I mean, we know that we've fallen short in a few places. For example, we had an issue when we were in Southern Africa, when our Angolans and Mozambique uh, Portuguese speakers were not happy with us at all. And so because of that, we promised that next year we are going to put on a Portuguese bootcamp. Again, when we were in North Africa, our Sudanese team were not happy with us because in as much as we tried to accommodate English and French speakers as much as we could in North Africa. We had Arabic speakers who we hadn't, we didn't make provision for. Again, for that reason, we're going to have an Arabic speaking bootcamp next year. Now, I know this is all going to be challenging for us, but it's going to be exciting challenges for us. So just watch this space. So I just want to extend um, my sincere thanks to the team on the West Africa bootcamp starting with the PTEF team, um, Tete Kofi. Thank you so much for your amazing hosting. Um, we cannot uh, forget to thank um, Lydia Charles Moyo. We met Lydia in East Africa and she was the host for the East Africa Bootcamp. She was amazing. So I think we're quite blessed to have people like Tete Kofi and Lydia Charles Moyo as our host for these bootcamps. So thank you very much. Thank you, Vanessa Abankwa, who is a PATF Ghana rep. And thank you for a um, short intro of PATF at the beginning of the program. Thank you very much to Eric Annan, who is our West Africa sub-regional lead. Eric, that was an amazing presentation on blockchain. And as I said to you earlier, that was a relatable presentation on blockchain. It was not necessarily so educational that we, we didn't feel like we understood because I think that it's easy to start uh, an introduction to blockchain by going through the cryptography elements of black blockchain and all the amazing benefits of blockchain like transparency and immutability of records and that kind of thing. But you did it beautifully by spinning in all the benefits of blockchain into a relatable topic, which was also great. Thank you very much. And then we had um, Dr. Adegola, who spoke to us about artificial intelligence. I'll be honest with you, I've never had such an in-depth presentation on artificial intelligence 
which is why this is a, a video that I'm definitely going to go and rewatch because I felt that we were getting a presentation which was more um which which was more like a, a university uh, level presentation. I say this because most of the presentations that I have attended on artificial intelligence have not been that in depth. And I think I needed it. I found this very interesting. I found it, you know, you know, quite exciting to listen to and to to go through the slides with you, Dr. Adegola. And I just want to say thank you very much for this. And as I'm talking about going to rewatch videos, I just want you to know that PATF does have a YouTube channel and all the bootcamp videos from Southern Africa all through to West Africa bootcamp, all these videos are going to be on the PATF YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And then Ibrahim Bashir, who we know quite well, thank you so much. And I, I like the way you are creative and bringing on board uh, Dolapo Salusi Ona and um, um, Olua Joba, um, Onto your, onto your session and gave, giving us a very practical, um, outlook into entrepreneurship. It was very practical. And thank you very much. I could see a lot of comments in the chat section, um, while you were having that, um, interesting session on entrepreneurship. Excellent. Thank you so much. And then we had that amazing keynote from Dr. Nina Kukweno. We couldn't have been more honored to have had Dr. Quena in our midst today. And um, again, that was such a riveting keynote. It was so in-depth. I know that I want to go back and watch that video again because I really want to, you know, grasp the whole of it. And it's very obvious that Dr. Quena has more insight into the development of technology in Africa and the development of the internet in Africa. I mean, considering that it was Dr. Quena himself who brought the internet uh, to Africa, you can understand that we have really, really been privileged to have had him to give us that, that keynote speech. So again, please go to the Patef YouTube page and you can watch the video again. And I would like to thank our moderators and panelists for the very first panel. Um, on engaging digi distributor ledger technology for West Africa's digital transformation. Thank you to Alexandra Kulani, Paul, Modu Njai, Dolapu Sanusi Ola again. Thank you for the um, insight you gave us into CBDCs and your impression of CBDCs and cashless economies. CBDCs are becoming topical in Africa with the announcements from Ghana and Nigeria of piloting central bank digital currencies. Let's watch this space because it concerns each and every one of us. We want to know how this is going to happen. We don't want SMEs to be left behind. We don't want citizens to not understand what is going on. It's important that education is a focus for the governments to ensure that we can all come along on this journey with um, going cashless in Africa. Um, so again, I just like to say thank you to panel session two, particularly um, Dr. Issa Boro, um, and also Uzmain, Bamba, Yazi, Adamu. Um, now, there were quite a few people who had connectivity issues and were not able to join the panel sessions. For example, Mrs. Beatrice Johnson from Liberia. And then also we had Pepe Landing from Senegal, uh, Masi Silla from Guinea, and also Fai Dudu from Senegal. Um, unfortunately, because of the, um, the challenges they had with um, the network issues, they were unable to join us on the panel. But thank you very much. And then, of course, we want to say a very big thank you to Abula Ugunde for his introduction to Agile and Digital Transformation. Um, a very short presentation, which we didn't think we had enough of. So certainly uh, when Ted says that this is going to take a whole day's, um, a, a whole day's session, I do agree with that. And I just want to extend a big thank you to you all for being part of PATEF. As I constantly tell all the PATEF country reps, this is not just about PATEF and the leadership and the board of PATEF. This is about Africa. This is about all of us. You know, PATEF is here to be able to work with you, collaborate with you, collaborate with all organizations across the continent for the empowerment of all across the continent. You know, it's Africa for Africans and Africans for Africa. You know, 
So it's one, one, one Kotef, one Africa, one everybody, one Africa, um, and all of us together. This is how we're going to do this. So without further ado, I just want to say we have come to the end of this session. And please keep an eye on Patev's um, sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube for new developments in Patev. Patev, we're going to come up with a new training program, which is going to be exciting because a new training program is just going to give you some highlights of what it's going to involve. We're going to have a whole day session on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, smart contracts and decentralized finance exchanges and other crypto platforms, launching protocols and initial coin offerings, digital assets and non-fungible tokens, decentralized gaming and the metroverse, decentralized autonomous organizations, and then of course, central bank digital currencies. Now this is this bootcamp session is not going to be our usual six hour uh, bootcamp within a day. This is going to be like a three whole day bootcamp session, which is very likely will be from sub-region to sub-region again. Thank you very much for all your support. Um, I understand that we probably have a video which we could share, but I don't seem to see it. So um, having said that, I think uh, I will let Ted come on to say his goodbyes to you. And I'm really, really grateful. And I, I am sincerely thankful to all of you for today. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your attention. It's been a long day, and um, uh, my apologies for some of our connectivity issues. It is what it is. Um, these are the challenges we face. That is why we must develop Africa so we own all this stuff. Uh, thank you again. Thank you so much for your kind attention.